there is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. You know, nothing happens unless you change. So change is not our enemy, it's our friend. There's a season that you may go through a difficult period, but that is to wake up your ability to change. You cannot become what you were born to be unless you are not willing to change into something you are not. This is why change is so important. Uh, I like what it says here, uh, Shakespeare says, sweet are the uses of adversity. We never grow in good times. We never advance unless we are under pressure. Change comes to improve and to advance your life, not to destroy you. I think that we often forget this. If we're going to face hardships. We can't avoid pain. We can't avoid trouble. All we can do is prepare our mindset so that we don't get overwhelmed by our circumstances. A lot of people, when they have a negative circumstance take place in their life, um, they react negatively to it. And that seems almost natural. In fact, that is natural. Something negative happens to me. My reaction back to it is negative. But this is why you have to change your mindset. I've seen people who had the education to go up, they had the gifting to go up, they had the talent to go up, didn't have the right attitude. And eventually if that attitude, if that heart, if that invisible part isn't right, you can have all the talent in the world, but you will always end up getting spoiled by your own attitude. Yes, you'll get the opportunity, yes, you'll get the job, yes, you'll get the deal, but you won't be able to keep it because your attitude will corrupt every opportunity that life offers you. Never saw it coming. Life isn't what happens to you when you're looking. What happens to you when you're looking is called a plan. Life is what happens to you when you're not looking, when your guard is down, when your back is tired. It's going to work on a Friday morning feeling good and having your boss call you in. And you know she has a look on her face and you know that look isn't good. You know the economy isn't so hard and we've got to let you go. And all you can think about are those three kids you have at home. You know, life is coming home from work and finding that note on the kitchen table saying, hey, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry, I love you, but I've got to go. And you're frustrated and you're betrayed and you're furious and you're angry, but all you want to do, all you want to do is hold them again. All you want to do is hear those words whispered in your ear, I love you again. You know, that's life. How do you handle that? How do you deal with that, those sort of situations? You see, it's been said a hundred times and I'll say it again. You've got to go through it. That's all it is. You've got to go through it. And going through it is not a function of, of just being courageous. It's not a function of just saying, well, I'm going to close my eyes and see what happens next. It's not that. It's really a function of three things. It's a beginning, it's a middle, and an end. And before you go through it, there's a choice. You make a choice to say, well, I'm either going to stay here or I'm going to be over there someday, somehow. It's a choice. So going through it and thinking about these three steps, beginning, middle, and end, you know, you can really save yourself a lot of trouble. You can discover something more about yourself. It's called life and it's not personal. Stuff's going to happen. And if you make it to the 40 yard line, if you can make it to age 40, between 40 and 60, it begins to intensify. All kind of things happen between 40 and 60. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and finally died. Between 40 and 60, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Between 40 and 60, I went through a divorce from someone that I love very much. Between 40 and 60, had a nationally syndicated talk show, highest rated, fastest canceled talk show in the history of television. Between 40 and 60, oh, life put a whooping on me. It ain't personal. It's called life. You know, I was homeless, man. I mean, you know, you're in a position where you're going, I got nowhere to go except up. I might as well keep hustling. I was in comedy. I just wasn't making nothing. All the money I was making, I was sending back home to my wife and kids. That didn't last long. She got tired of that real fast. But I couldn't go back to Cleveland because I wouldn't have enough money to drive back down south to perform. 
One time I drove to the house in Cleveland. I finally got enough money. I drove to the house in Cleveland. Everybody was gone. I didn't see my kids for almost two years. They just left, boarded up the house. So next thing you know, I'm in the car. I lived there, but it taught, me, it taught me determination, man. I'm a really, really determined person. It also taught me that no matter what happens to you, it ain't over. I was determined to be something. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. The only way off of welfare is to change your default settings. The only way to get a good education is to change your default settings. As long as you're programmed with what you can't do and what you can't be and what you can't have, you will never get up. But I dare you to go into your phone booth like Clark Kent and spin around and come out Superman and say, wait a minute, I'm better than this. I'm getting ready to change my default setting. I will not let you abuse me. I will not stay. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. So the first thing you have to think about when you're going through something is very simple. It's I'm not where I want to be, but I know I can get there. I have faith that I'm going to get where I want to be. So yeah, go through the grieving process. Grieve, accept that, say yes to that. You know, one day you look up and, you know, you're still in pain, you're still hurting, but you realize that, hey, it's not as bad as it was. It doesn't hurt as much as it did. And I'm going forward, I'm moving forward. And at some point you merge, you get to the other side, and you know that, hey, I haven't forgotten, but the pain doesn't hold you captive anymore. You're not crippled by the emotion, by the experience. You're not living out of, out of the past, out of your experiences of pain and defeat and betrayal. You're not living out of all that stuff. You're living in a new perspective. It's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. The key is what you do about it. If you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. Anytime you go through something, there's a fight. It's either a spiritual fight, an emotional fight, a physical fight. There's some sort of fight. But the key to the whole thing of this fight is that the form is in the fight. That's the only thing you should take away from here today. The form is in the fight. What does that mean? It means that you don't get to become this interesting, dynamic, creative, courageous woman, amazing man, without going through something. Right? That's where the form is. The people who are form are the people who you see them and they stand out to you. Because you know there's something about them, they figured something out about life. They're attractive to you, they're interesting to you. These people have form because they've gone through something. You know, so don't run away from the fight. Meaning, go through it. Don't be afraid to go through it. Get through it because at the end of getting through it, I guarantee you there's at least one thing you discover about yourself. You discover that there's a version of you you haven't discovered yet. You don't even know exists yet. It's not that you might not mess up and do what you used to do. It's just that it's no longer your normal. And when it's no longer your normal, you will never go back to it like it used to have you. Because the moment you get out of the situation, you change back into who you're supposed to be. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Both the pig and the sheep can fall into the same mud, but the difference is in the default. The pig is defaulted to lack the mud. The sheep has a default that says, I don't belong in this mess. I might be in this mess, but I don't belong. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. 
I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflations and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value.